Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Tom Doyle. I'm the Conservatoire Coordinator here at the MTU Cork School of Music. And on behalf of the uh, Department of Orchestral Studies and our head, Joey Scannell, and the head of the school, Dr. Kira Glashin Artem, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the Doolan Room for this afternoon's uh, lunchtime recital. Um, in particular, we'd like to extend a warm welcome to our Norwegian friends and colleagues who join us here uh, this afternoon, and to pay particular mention to uh, the uh, UNOF and the Erasmus Plus, which are funding uh, this programme, and indeed our colleagues in the Irish Association of Youth Orchestras, Alan, Sinead and Jack, um, for uh, linking in with us. Um, and to the Fabio Quartet and the project MMXX uh, Quartet, which we'll be uh, talking more um, about, and performing, of course, so, without further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, Brigitte, who starts the um, presentations and will be followed by uh, one of our doctoral students here, Caitlin, who will uh, talk about the uh, technology that was used to enable and enhance uh, this particular project. So, Brigitte, thank you. Thank you.
but it's it's hard to to uh, work musically because of the latency, and it's hard to work in details. And we also found out that slow movements uh, are easier because then if you have some latency, it doesn't like everything doesn't fall apart. And so, uh, and we also found out that if we have long distances, often the latency can be, uh, it can vary from where you, where you are and where the server you are connected to are. So, and it's also really strange for us to don't see each other. We had to concentrate pretty much in another way that we were used to at rehearsals. And, and uh, the difference between being to connected to Wi-Fi and Ethernet is that the Ethernet is more stable, but it, it doesn't actually it doesn't worry on how much latency you have. It just worry on if it sometimes if you're uh, at Wi-Fi it have jumps and it, sometimes it's stable and then suddenly you're out of nowhere and you don't understand anything. <laughs> so. <laughs> Kind of our conclusion so far is that online rehearsals is a kind of a good supplement, but it do not replace physical rehearsals. But if you, as I said earlier, live in a really small city, it could be nice to have some online rehearsals, kind of <coughs> to get you motivated and uh, to have pro progression uh, between physical meetings. And so yeah, we would like after this to make a guide and out of our, uh, our answers and results so that maybe more people can use this supplement. Yeah. And then it's Caitlin's turn. CSM, but for this project, um, I was the Irish side of the technical advisory stuff. So um, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about um, what Espen and I, Espen was my counterpart over in Norway, uh, worked on and um, a little bit more about the online rehearsal spaces, so low latency audio spaces. So um, some frequently asked questions that have come up when I talked about this previously. Um, so what is a low latency audio rehearsal space? Um, so I'm sure most people probably know what latency is, but in this case, it does refer to the time delay you hear when performing with other musicians online. If you have tried to rehearse with other musicians over Zoom, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's uh, basically these softwares are deliberately to try and offset that kind of uh, lag when you play with other people online. Um, what is an audio interface? So an audio interface is a piece of hardware that converts analog signals into digital ones. So in other words, it takes um, the sound that you make in the real world into your microphone, converts it into a signal that your computer can understand and play back to you. And then um, this is specifically for one of the softwares I'm going to be discussing, what is Jack? So Jack is a type of sound server specifically optimized for the demands of like audio production and online rehearsal. So it's an abbreviation of Jack Audio Connection Kit, so it's kind of contained within itself. Um, <laughs> so, how did we get started? Um, myself and Espen worked together to decide on the best hardware for the project. So um, after some discussion, we concluded that the USB interface and the T-Bone Ovid mic uh, with a clip for the instruments would be the most appropriate for the project. That way, the musicians wouldn't have to worry about positioning the mic correctly and um, hitting off it, things like that. Um, this was something that had come up in the previous project that I worked with IOI. I was trying to get that positioning right every time it was difficult. Um, sorry, my mouse has disappeared. Uh, there we go. Um, so our final setup for the project was an interface, a microphone, an XLR lead, the clip, and then headphones or smartphones, because otherwise you'd end up with a feedback loop if you tried to use the audio output from your computer, and then a headphone adapter and an ethernet cable. I will touch on Ethernet as well, but <laughs> you get to most of, mostly covered it already. So what is Jamulus? So Jamulus is the first software that Espen and I investigated. So it's a software for playing music and rehearsing with low latency. It's a very basic program. It's really easy to just kind of plug in and go. It's server-based. It is completely free to use, which makes it quite appealing. Um, and it is audio only. So the other two that I'm going to discuss do have extra features that Jamulus doesn't have, but um, 
biggest thing about Jamless is that it's free and low bandwidth. So um, additionally, the servers that the software was set up on were external, so we used um, Amazon Web Services like Sale to set up the servers for that, and they were based in Dublin, Sweden, and Frankfurt. So what is JackTrip? So this is the one with Jack in the name. So JackTrip was the second low latency audio rehearsal space we investigated for the project. Um, it also acts as a performance platform. So JackTrip has video streaming and radio available for digital concerts and performances. Um, and it has a built-in recording feature that you can pay for. So similarly to Jamulus, JackTrip performed well with latency, though not as well as Jamulus. But a dedicated server was more expensive, and you only got 30 minutes free rehearsal time a day, um, or a week. I need to double check that one, sorry. Um, it's also significantly more bandwidth heavy than Jamulus, so if you were more rural, it just wasn't suitable. Um, yeah. um, and then the third and final software that we tested for this project was Jam Kazam. Um, so of the three options, it was the most limited in its free version and it was also the most expensive to use. So to get the same quality audio as Janulus and JackTrip's free versions, you had to purchase the most expensive membership option and any of the cheaper options had time caps and lower audio and connection quality. Um, oh. um, additionally, um, though it had a video streaming functionality just like with the audio, the quality of the video was poor unless you paid with the highest tier membership. The main point in its favour was that you didn't need to set up the server, but um, honestly it was by far the weakest of the three and it still worked out more expensive, even with server costs included for the others. Um, we did actually discuss one or two other software that we didn't end up testing, such as Sonobus, which seemed to have a really extensive range of features, but a much steeper learning curve. So we kind of parked that and went with Jamulus. So, why Jamulus? So, of, of the three software that we tested, it was uh, the most user friendly, uh, the cheapest, the least bandwidth use, and the connectivity was the most consistent. Um, additionally, like with the cheapest, like the servers are only like they're less than four euro a server, and you can host as like quite a large number of musicians on that. I think the most that I've gotten before is twenty. I haven't tested beyond that because I haven't needed to, but <laughs> your your mileage may vary with that, but. Regardless, it was the most consistently well performing. Um, so, some of the technical issues, uh, again, these were kind of touched on a little bit already, but um, the biggest issue for this project was definitely going to be distance and connectivity. So, there was issues on my side getting the issue the musicians connected to Jamulus, um, the lag between the two countries, as was mentioned, was going to be difficult to navigate. Um, and then also, um, I was working mostly remotely, so diagnosing technical issues can be hard to do remotely. So um, what I did end up doing was meeting with the Irish musicians to, to help them set up. So uh, some of the musicians I worked with were unfamiliar with audio interfaces and audio software. So um, I met with, my last one? There is. Um, I met with the Irish musicians in person to walk through the setup. So that way, if an issue did pop up, they could tell me where along the, the chain of connection it had started to show up for them. Um, Additionally, using any other internet heavy applications or devices at the same time would result in poor performance and it's exacerbated again by the distance between the two halves of the orchestra. We experimented, uh, myself and Espen, with servers based in Stockholm, Frankfurt and Dublin and while Frankfurt was found to be best, the ping was still high and randomly jumped up um, as, sorry, <laughs> um, as was mentioned. but. Um, because of this, it was re recommended to use Ethernet, but unfortunately some of the musicians didn't have consistent access to this either, so that's another limiting factor. Um, and additionally, um, due to a variety of internet speeds and bandwidths available in the area, people's signals are going to be noisier or weaker than others, and that'll vary session to session regardless of how well you have it set up. So, um, yeah, that kind of covers the technical side of the project, so I will pass it back over.
um, we chose the repertoire based on a mix up between or a, a um, range between fast paced music and slow paced music because we did test both of them. And to conclude that, first of all, fast paced music is very hard to play on Jarvis. <laughs> because of the latency, like semi quavers and quavers and so on, fast paced notes will sound terrible. <laughs> because if, if someone playing like da 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 and they won't play that, but they have a different latency, so it sounds like blah, 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 all the time. <laughs> so the experience we had with, for example, the Hulk's first movement, if you know about it, it starts with dum da 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 it sounded like all the time because we didn't have the same latency and it was too unstable to play unfortunately. Then we had the second movement which is quite slow, it goes very slow and it's a very beautiful movement of course but it's easier to time when they have to start playing together because the problem is that if the musicians are listening to each other they may be too late for me to hear it. So if for example, the first violin are playing something, and then the second violins are listening to that, and they play on that. For me, as a conductor, it will sound different timing. It will sound not together at all. So they had to, like, most of the time, unfortunately, gamble to when they had to play, and they had to think of it. They had to, like, play in the future. So they need to do things like, is it my time to play now? I will gamble and then try to play. And the result is that on my side it sounded actually not too bad. We had some recordings, um, it sounded okay. But on their side it sounded terrible. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem because then the musicians won't use their musicianship or their um, competence within to play together and to play the music together because they need to have so much more focus on other things that's not so important. So we had some issues but we managed to get through it and um, we are going to play the repertoire you see here, the first second movement of the Hulk Suite, that's just a call which is three quartet number eight first movements, and also the Louis Ford double three quartet number one, the second and third movements. And all of this we have played on Jamless except for the four second movements. So then we had like a control to check whether it helped to have Jamless before we met or not. And uh, the musicians have thought about it, so we can ask them what they think about it, but in my opinion, Unfortunately, in Jamless may have been a little bad for fast paced music because then we have like we need to. They had like bad habits playing, and when we met, it was like, are we going to play now? And they had to listen at a different uh, level than when we had Jamless. But on the slow paced music, it may be actually not too bad to play uh, because then we are more uh, we are more focused on the music. Um, and um, I don't know how you think about it, but it's very good for, for the start process, for the very beginning of the process to learn new music because then they're going to be familiar with the sheets, they're going to learn the notes, they're going to play the correct notes, and that's very good because then it's easier when we meet to play and work with the music in detail and not try to quit. Um, but I think that Jamless, or it may be our fault, but Jamless has like a point where it's fine, it sounds okay, and then the, that's the limit for how we can work with the music. Because we want to work with the music on a high level, we want to work with the details, and we want to really go deep in the music, but Jamless makes it quite hard to do that, because we don't know if the technical difficulties are destroying our thoughts, are there something wrong with our minds on my side with the technical things, and the balance, because some of them have 100 milliseconds of latency, some of them have 30, and it's like, you're very, you know, I can't hear you. It was a lot of, oh sorry, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> and we had to like, adjust the lever and everything. And it was like, I don't know how, how we can work the balance because on their side it may sound different from on my side. And on Jamless, as you saw the picture, you have like levers on a soundboard and we can adjust that. The problem is that if I adjust, for example, the violas down because there's some too much in my ears, the balance will be fake or it want to be a good start point for to, to work with the balance. So um, I would say on this project as a conductor, I don't feel like a conductor or a journalist, I feel just like a leader or very like strict leader. We have the police counting very loud, one, two, three, four all the time. And I'm sitting in my living room or where my computer is and waving my arms when no one is seeing it. <laughs> all, the, all the people passing by. And I, and I think this looks very stupid. <laughs> but the problem is that for me as a conductor, I'm very I'm in need of the visual signs of the musicians to understand what they, what they play, what they do, and for them as well to see my hands or to see my movements. 
So I think the visual aspect of this is it's very important. It's actually, I think, the key to maybe the success to have the visual side of it because, of course, we can talk about it and we can, like, I can count and there could be a metronome, but then it would be very static and it would be not so good, unfortunately. So it was a good fun project and we're going to have some more uh, research after the meeting here, but I think I will speak for everyone when I say that we are very glad to be here. We're very glad to meet uh, all in person to play together and I'm very happy to present the results now. And as I said to the machines as well, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because the, <laughs> 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 because the point of this project is to see how far we can come with the music. And if we had like three or four weeks of rehearsal time, then it would be so much different than just these three days with very intense rehearsal time. So yeah, I just you can come up and uh, give a round of applause. So it's a very, very beautiful ensemble and we have worked together now for the past three days, uh, very intense with their repertoire. And I think we look forward to play that for our audience. So we will start with the Greek public suite first and second.
uh, eight three quarters, first movement. And this is one of the pieces that we may have found actually easier to play. It's like quite a hard uh, quartet of the movement because it's a very intricate uh, chord progression and uh, harmonics. But this is quite slow. <laughs> so when it's slow, it was not too bad to play on jazzless because it's easier to understand when we are where we are in bar and how we can play more or, less, more or less together. Um, but the problem here is that the sound that we get off from Revelous is very mechanical. So when we want to work with a, a rich sound and a mood and everything, we can't actually do that because it's so mechanical. It's, unfortunately, sometimes it sounds like just a MIDI sound and it's very static and it's very hard. To, I can say to the musicians, please play richer, please play rounder. And the result, it's unfortunately more or less the same because of Javanus' limited, uh, limited capabilities of reproducing the sound that com comes from the musicians. But then we meet again here in the mix and we are trying to work on it. So the Shasta Kovic is uh, the first movement.
steps, but we also have made project control, as I said, for the second movement. It's quite fast paced music. So, the second movement, we started to rehearse on Monday, and we only had these few days to rehearse it. Um, but it's very interesting to see how far we have gotten with only meeting in person and rehearsing a new piece or a new movement without being in Davos before. And I think that. To be honest, I don't know how far we could have gotten if you have applied the Douglas because this is a fast paced movement. It may actually have been worse in case of habit, learning some bad habits playing together, not maybe being precise or maybe having to move the tempo as well. Um, but I, I think we have got quite far with the, with the movement as well. And um, it's interesting to see because we want Douglas to be a good supplement to, to just normal rehearsals and meeting in person. But as Brigitte said, it's absolutely no replacement at all. <laughs> because we are doing so much visual cues to each other. We are musicians, we need to really look at each other to see the pace expressions, the bowing and everything. And that is absolutely no going down with us, unfortunately. And we have thought maybe if we had a software with the visual side as well, the problem would be that it's the booty call is, is the best <laughs> when we have it on the screen. And if there are some delays between or latency between the video and the sound and all, all them together, it may actually have been quite mis, um, a mismatch between what we see, what we hear, and what we're playing. So it's a discussion with having uh, how, how good it is to have Javelis. Um, it's, it's a sad thing that we're going back to Javelis now since we have been here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the teleporter is traveling to Trondheim in Norway, where we're going to meet again with some new repertoire as well. And um, now, since we have the experience with Javelis and we have now got more familiar with it, I think we can explore it more in, in like meaning of having more maybe jam sessions or some improvisation. And we also know the limits of Javelis and we want to push the limits. And we also know what capabilities we have with Javelis. And maybe the process of learning a music piece together that was, will be easier after this first part of the project. Or maybe we will find out like, it's not worth it. <laughs> well, then that's the kind of the conclusion. It's a very interesting project, and hopefully we'll come up with a guide to help both the youth and the kids or children, both in Ireland and Norway, to play together uh, when they're having a distance. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this as well, as much as I have. <laughs> but now we're going to finish up with this four, and we'll start with the third movement, and we'll finish with the second.